Hello and welcome to Ask in English. Today I'll be reviewing a terrific French actor, Vincent Cassel, who's been in a number of films such as The Apartment, uh, Ocean's 12, Ocean's 13, I've seen him in, and his breakthrough film was uh, La Haine in French. Let's go. That day, my brother, who's three years younger than me, came back from school and he said, He's very fluid when he's speaking. I think here he pronounced the past of say, said, as say. Um, it's a very tiny thing. I was coming back from the soccer field and uh, they asked us to lay on the floor and we heard gunshot. He said, we heard gunshot. Um, the gunshot is, is a noun for the shot of a gun. But he didn't use an article here, so it would be more correct to say heard a gunshot. Wig on the, on, uh, on his head, and um, he, he was disguised. But nobody would say anything because we respected him, and some and the and people people who didn't respect him were scared of him. I mean, everything he said there is perfect English, perfect grammar, not even a mistake. So really impressive, and it's nice because he doesn't have a very strong French accent, but you you still hear the French accent, which I think is nice to to retain. Very expressive, using certain yeah, expressions and ways of speaking. Really good. He was hanging out. He was there. Who said he was hanging out? So this is a very common phrasal verb in English that we use all the time. It means to spend time doing something. So you could say, oh, hang out with my friends on the weekend. Not that I'm a particularly violent person in life, you know. But it goes with my energy. He said, not that I'm a particular violent person. I think maybe it's an accident, but it would be particularly but really good, so I'll have a look at another video. And we met, he gave me the script. Two hours later I called and I said, okay, I'm in. Easy. Like you said, I'm in. Such a simple sentence, but I think that is kind of a high level colloquial way of, of saying I'm a part of something. I've been Years. really shocked by pie, actually. So here he said, I've been really shocked by Pi. It would be, I was really shocked by pi. Something in the past, so we would use the past simple. This is the passive form. But it's a tiny mistake. It's very possible. I don't know French well enough, but it's possible in French you would use the equivalent of the present perfect, which sometimes happens. You change the tense between languages. But everything else really good. For family reasons, I was really close to a man called Michael Bennett. Of course. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. And so I, I really had, yeah. yeah. So I, I remember him working a lot, the workshops, the, the the rehearsals and stuff. So. Okay. So he's just mentioned Mike Bennett. Um, I don't know who Mike Bennett is, but that's an English sounding name. So I think that uh, Vincent Cassell has been exposed to English for a long time in his life, which is why he's reached such a, a high level. I could go to the to the opera in Paris and then hang out here in the, I mean not here but in New York at the New York City Ballet too. So I used hang out again. It's a very common phrasal verb. The material, the wood, almost the smell of the, you know the studio and and those stuff. And I think uh, here he said those stuff. This is a mistake I hear occasionally. It would be that stuff. Stuff is an uncountable noun, so you can't have stuffs. So you can't have more than one so it's always going to be in the singular form this stuff that stuff if you want to use those it would be those things it's an easy mistake to make looking at it from the grammar no no it's it's one of the the toughest thing ever one of the toughest thing ever i think you would say one of the toughest things ever but it's great how you see, he says one of the toughest things so that's a perfect superlative form with an adjective tough so He's <laughs> got a very good level of English. There's no problem, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, on that aspect, it was very easy. Here he said, on that aspect, when it would be in that aspect. Great, so yeah. thank you for coming. It's really nice thank to you. meet you. You're such a great actor. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's have a look at another interview. I mean, first of all, not everybody is... is, uh, is um, as sensitive to uh, to uh, to a taser than other people. As I said, not everyone is as sensitive to a taser than other people. This is the as as form, so it would be not everyone is as sensitive 
to a taser as other people. I've watched a few because I didn't know how to react. That's a tiny thing he said, uh, I've watched a few. Perhaps a native speaker would say, I checked out a few. So that's kind of the differences between somebody who has learned English as a foreign language compared with somebody who speaks it natively is we have more tools to work with. We're not thinking in terms of um, the language. I don't know where I'm going with this. Let's just keep watching the video. I'm just an actress, you know, I'm not a stunt man. <laughs> mm, I think he said I'm just an actress. Um, I don't know why I'd say this. He's an actor. First of all, I don't really see any of the actors or the director anymore. Oh, really? I like that things like, first of all, that's definitely something that I would teach for first level English. And that is more expressive. So when you learn more uh, after the basics and being able to express yourself with correct grammar, then we start including more expressions that you don't need, but make your language sound more natural. And if people for the 25th anniversary wants to see it again, you know, let's do it. But I mean, he said here, if people want to do it, people is third person, plural. So it's if people want, we don't put the S at the end of the verb for this. It's a common mistake. Um, so there we go. No, yeah, well, I don't know, because, you know, have some race, uh, you know, dog, because of the pedigree, you have to choose the letter of the year, blah, blah, blah. So. Okay, so the race of the dog, we have a specific word in English, is the breed of the dog. And I fainted and I fell on the nose. He said on the nose. If French is similar to Spanish, you would use an article in front. We don't in English, we'd say I fell on my nose. I fought with an, with an oyster. <laughs> so he said, I fought with an oyster. That took me a, a moment there. I fought with an oyster is the past simple pronunciation. Um, he's got the right word, but it's just a, a, a pronunciation of a word which is quite difficult. The O-U-G-H, we pronounce, I believe, at least nine different ways. We also have the same spelling for the word through, different sound, rough, uh, and a couple of others I can't, I can't remember. And uh, it's a good exercise because the more you do it, the best you will be. This is a structure that I think is taught at advanced level. There's a few different variations, but it's the more, the more, and sometimes you use comparative. So he should say here, the more I do, the better I will be, but he's used the superlative best. Other examples might be stronger I am, the faster I will run, those two comparatives, but we use more. The more I practice, the more I will learn. It's always a comparative form. And what I wanted to do personally with this gangster, maybe because I've been playing so many gangsters in the past, you know? So here he said, I've been playing so many gangsters in the past, we wouldn't use Present perfect continuous would use present perfect simple. I've played so many gangsters in the past. He's a normal person. He could be anybody's uncle. Here I think it would be somebody's uncle because it's a specific person, not anybody's. He's a normal guy. He just has this business and on the side, you know, art left. I like this use of on the side. If we say on the side, it means maybe your main job is one thing and then you do a, an extra small, less significant project. For example, maybe you work in an office, but you do a little bit of programming on the side, which means it's not your main job. Okay, that's it. Uh, Vincent Cassell has an excellent level of English. It was very difficult to find any mistakes, really, and because generally he speaks so well, and they are small mistakes. Very difficult to remove all mistakes completely. So yeah, he, he really speaks to sort of an advanced level of English. He needs to because it's part of his job. It's an important part of his job, acting in English movies. So yeah, that's it. I'll do another one soon and I will see you then. Bye bye.